Uh, this is section 2.4, day 1, and um, we're talking about rates of change and tangent lines. So if we um, Uh, before we get started in this section, um, we're going to gain some comfort with some algebra skills. So here's a function, x squared minus 3x. So let's evaluate the following. So we know this is a parabola, and um, we, parabolas have a vertex. And so this one's opening upward. And so let's evaluate the, the value when x is equal to 0. <clears throat> so when x is equal to 0, that's this location here. Um, when we plug in 0 into the function, we get a y value of 0. So we're at the origin there, <clears throat> an f value of 1, which would be right here. When x is equal to 1 and we plug that into the function, we get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So we have a y value of negative 2. How about f of a, just a general location a. We don't know where a is. It could be anywhere along that curve. You can see the purple dot. It can be anywhere along that curve. And so if we lock in a certain location for A, like here, then what that means is we're out of distance A. We don't know what that A is, but we're just out of distance A from the axis. So we're going to stick A in here and square it. And we're going to get A squared minus 3A. Don't get a number necessarily, but, um, but we do get that is, the, that is the Y coordinate. That's your F of A. And so we could do the same thing with the variable h. The h could be anywhere along the axis as well. And so we have a, um, a y value of h squared minus 3h. So if I talked about a location f of 2 plus h, then really what we're talking about is being, let's, let's just assume h is positive. We're out at least 2 on the x-axis and then some more. So, um, you know, for, the, for that situation, we could be somewhere, if you notice, the black dot is always out to the, to the right of 2. So it's 2 plus a sum value. So I can randomly stop that maybe right here. So if you notice, we're out a little bit from 2. So if we put 2 plus h in for each of the x-coordinates, we get 2 plus h squared minus 3 times quantity 2 plus h. And so we can simplify that by foiling this out and distributing this and combining terms, and it looks like we have then h squared, and with these two terms, we got plus h, and with these two terms, we have minus 2. So, um, so that would be the y-coordinate, the expression for the y-coordinate. And so those, those skills, um, these are kind of some, just some algebraic skills, but it's this last skill that we're going to need to talk about and, and be able to apply um, in this next um, in this next calculus concept. So the essential question then is how can we calculate the slopes of tangent lines using limits? So in, in order to talk about that, we have to talk about something called a rate of change. So we know a rate is a ratio, and, um, and so it's a rise over run. And so when we talk about the average rate of change, when we talk about the average rate of change, we have to think of a rate as being the slope of what um, <clears throat> of uh, of what we are of of the uh, of the function. So when we talk about the average rate, we are talking about an algebra slope. In other words, we're taking two points and we are connecting them with a straight line. So if we look if we look at this function here, this we look at the function x cubed minus x. So here it is. It's it's kind of light gray. But here's x cubed minus x. If I want the average rate from, from 1 to 3, an x value of 1 to an x value of 3, that is the slope of this line connecting the points um, directly. In other words, it's, it, it really has very little to do with the function itself. That's why we call it an average. Um, and so we're going to figure out our amount of change and we're going to divide that by the length of the interval. So in other words, our rise over our run. So our amount of change is our, our rise. So it's our, our difference in our y values. So here's our function notation from the previous screen. So we have f of 3 minus f of 1. Our length of our interval is subtracting our domain. That's our run. So it's 3 minus 1. 
So f of 3 is up here. So when I plug 3 into here, I get 27 minus 3, which is 24. f of 1, when I plug 1 into here, I get 0. So I get 24 minus 0 over 3 minus 1, which is 12. So our average rate of change is 12. In other words, our slope is 12. So how does that, how does that um, up relate then to tangent lines? Because this line on the previous screen is not a tangent line. It touched, a tangent line touched the function in one spot. This touches the function in two spots. And that's why we call it a secant line. That's by definition what a secant line is, is it touches a function in two locations. So what does it have to do with tangent lines? Well, this is what's happening then. So we know a tangent line is touching the curve in exactly one location. But if we only have one location, if we only have a single point, how can we find the slope? Because that slope calculation we just did took us required two points. So let's talk about this then. Um, we have let's start with a simple parabola x squared, and we have this point one one. Okay, and I want to write a, the equation of a tangent line at this curve. So I want to write the equation of that line because it's only touching the curve in one location. I can't do an algebraic uh, calculation. I can't do a rise over run because I don't have a second point anywhere. So um, how can we, let's just start out by estimating it. So can you kind of start at this point and go up and right and see that we looks like we're kind of going up two and right one maybe. Um, and so we can estimate that that slope is about 2. And if we extend this line down here, maybe it crosses at about a negative 1. So we could probably eyeball it and get actually really close. But we want to get exact. So we're going to start, we're going to start this discussion by talking about a secant line. Okay, if we have a secant line, that means we have, we have two points and we can do a rise over run. Um, so if we have, here's our same function, x squared. We, I just have the right half of it. Um, so if I connect the points from 1, 1 to 4, 16, I can find that slope. That slope is going to be f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1, which is going to be 16 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 which is going to be five, 15 thirds. But that really, I mean, if you remember that tangent line here, that, that's not even close to the tangent line slope. So let's take two points that are closer together. So this is a slope of five. If we take two points that are closer together, in other words, let's connect this point and this point here. So let's connect those two points. Um, then we can get a little closer in the slope. So we have f3 minus f1 over 3 minus 1. So we have 9 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. That's 8 over 2 or slope of 4. So it's getting closer. So why not even take a point that's closer than that? So let's try this one. And when we take that point and connect the point 1, 1 to 2, 4, um, we get a slope of f of 2 minus f of 1 and then over 2 minus 1. So that'd be 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 over... 2 minus 1, and so that is a slope of 3. So that's even closer yet. And so <clears throat> what we're doing is we're taking, these are all still secant lines, right? They're, they all still touch the curve in two points. But we're taking these, we're, we're bringing this point on the right closer and closer to where we're interested in at this location here. And and so as we, as we um, take that and cut that distance between the points down, that is the idea of using limits. So um, let's let's get really close. Let's say um, let's look at 1.1 right here, which would be right about where my cursor is, um, almost too close to draw. But if we looked at that slope between the where my cursor is and, and the point at 1, 1 then we're starting to get something that really looks almost tangent. And so if I square 1.1, I get 1.21. Uh, f of 1 is still 1 over, over the difference in the x-coordinates. So I get 0.21 over 0.1, 
which ends up being 2.1. So that ends up being really close to the actual slope. Remember, we estimated the actual slope to be 2. Um, so, but again, it's not exact. So, uh, but I've certainly cut down the distance between the points. You know, we started with a distance between these points. We started going from 1 to 4. So we started out with a distance of 3, and now we have a distance of 0.1. So we got a lot closer. So we can keep getting closer and closer and closer, but that really is the definition of, um, of, of a limit. And so we, we can figure this out then by using that definition of the limit. So if we bring that close, if we bring that point closer and closer, so this red point is the one that we're moving closer and closer, we can see that um, as that point gets closer and closer, that the secant line, which is the red line, turns into the tangent line, which is the orange line. And so, um, and, and so if we take the limit then, as, and we, we say the limit as h approaches 0, h is this distance delta x. And um, so as this distance between the points closes, and goes to zero, that's what that's saying, then we should be able to have the exact slope of the tangent line. And so that's the process we're gonna, we're gonna embark in now. And that process is gonna require us to use some of those algebraic skills we did at the beginning of the, of the lecture. So, um, so as we look at, Um, going back to x squared here, and here is our here is our tangent line at one. So going back to um, going back to this function, this is what we're going after is this slope. So this is definitely the tangent line, and we can see we do have actually a slope of exactly two on that green line. And so we're going to go after using the limit method, so that we can get a value of exactly two for that slope of that tangent line. Not uh, not all those values we got beforehand. But we're going to go after that. We're not going to get a value of 5 or 4 or 3 or even 2.1. We're going to get exactly a value of 2 by using the slope, uh, by using the limit method and taking the limit of the slope expression as, um, as that distance between the points goes to 0. So, so we look at this, this problem then like this. Um, here's the red point here, or here's the, uh, here's the orange point that moves towards um, towards the, the point at when x is equal to 1. So we're closing up that gap. And so this is where those skills come in, um, in, in terms of finding this location. So this location is out at 1 plus h. And so this is the y value when x is equal to 1 point h. 1, 1 plus h, excuse me. And so we have to plug in 1 plus h into this function. So if you notice, if you, if you ignore this limit notation, this is rise over run, right? This is y2 minus y1, and this is the distance between the x values. So x2 minus x1 is just h. And so um, we're going to call this point A. So that's f of 1. So our slope then is going to be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h plus 1 minus 1. So here's my rise, here's my run. You can see that the run is just h, and it will always be just h. So f of 1 plus h means um, if, I, if I take the limit of that, um, so here's, here's my, my algebraic expression, but I'm going to take the limit of that, and that's going to give me my tangent line slope. So um, if you notice, that's going to be what's happening. That, that's the whole limit process right there. So let's, let's review that. The, this whole, this, this notation, limit as h approaches 0, that means this visual here. Okay, so watch this orange point as it slides towards the green point. That's that whole visual there. Okay, so I'm going to run through that again. Right now, we have this slope. And this is a secant line because it's touching the, the curve in two points. So right now, this slope is this expression. And when I hit, again, when I let, allow it to animate, when I, and it animates, we're talking about this expression. So it's this notation, the limit as h approaches 0, 
approaching means it's moving towards. So that literally means as the orange dot moves towards the green dot so that the distance between them is zero, then we start to see the slope of the tangent line. So there it goes. So that becomes that value. So now it's a matter of plugging and chugging. Okay, so we are f of 1 plus h means put 1 plus h into here. So we're going to put 1 plus h into here and we're going to square it, which means we're going to have to FOIL stuff. So if you remember the skills from the beginning of the lecture, this is where they're coming into play. So that is 1 plus 2h plus h squared. f of 1 is just plugging 1 in here, so that's 1. So these things are the numerator. So, um, so we're going to place those into the numerator. So the, the slope at, at 1, 1 is going to be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h. And so um, now we're going to just simplify. I'm going to simplify the numerator. You can see that the numeric values cancel. Minus 1 and plus 1 cancel. That will always happen. Um, the numeric values will always cancel each other out, and you'll be left with values that have h's in them. So we have that. And then I'm going to factor out an h, because what we see is an h in both of these terms. We can factor it out. And we, then we can see that it cancels with the denominator. And that's really important to get the denominator to cancel, because um, if the denominator doesn't cancel, then we have 0 in the denominator, and that's a, that's a big problem. So these cancel. And so we're left with evaluating the limit um, as h goes to 0 of the expression 2 plus h. And now we have an expression that we can plug 0 into and get a finite value. So there's our slope. Our slope is exactly 2. So now we have the slope. It's 2. And we have a point. It's 1 comma 1. Writing the equation of a tangent line is something they ask you to do a lot. And it's really simple. We're going to stick with this expression. We're going to stick with the point-slope form. Um, we're not going to do slope-intercept. That's too much math. So we're going to have y equals our slope 2 times the quantity x minus the x-coordinate of 1 plus the y-coordinate of 1. So remember, that's that slope-point form. Um, so now we're going to write the equation of the normal line. So remember that normal means perpendicular, and it's the opposite or the negative reciprocal or opposite reciprocal of the slope. So if the slope was 2, then the normal line that's perpendicular is negative 1 over 2. And so um, that being the case, then we have the slope. It's negative 1 over 2. We have a point. It's 1 comma 1. And so its equation, and here's the normal line. It's, it's red. It cuts right across the function, is negative 1 over 2 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 1. Um, so here's, here's an example. It says find the slope of the parabola. Um, y equals x squared minus 3x at the point 2 comma negative 2. So here's 2 comma negative 2. It's that point right there. So that means a is equal to 2 because a is equal to the x coordinate. So it's that point. So here's our definition of our, our, slope, of, our, slope, of, our, our slope of our tangent line. Um, and so we need our um, we need our a plus h and our f of a expressions. So since a is 2, we need 2 plus h. So we're going to take f of 2 plus h, which means we're going to put 2 plus h in for x here and square it. And then we're going to put 2 plus h in for x here and multiply it by negative 3. So there we go, 2 plus h squared minus 3 times 2 plus h. And we're going to FOIL this out, 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And we're going to distribute the negative 3. This gets tricky with the negative sign, so don't forget to distribute that negative sign. And we're going to simplify this. So I see I have an h squared. <clears throat> and I have a 4h minus 3h, which is a 1h. And I have a negative 6 and a plus 4. I have a negative 2. So there's, there's that expression simplified. And now I need f of a. And f of a is f of 2. So when I plug 2 into here and square it, and then minus 3 times 2, I get 2 squared minus 3 times 2, which is 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. So it's these two expressions. It's this and this that go into the numerator up here. So we're going to plug that in. Um, so we have the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. And then we'll notice it's minus a negative value because this f of 2 is negative over h. And now we're going to simplify. So I'm going to distribute that negative sign. 
see how my constant values um, are, are going to cancel each other out. Again, that will always happen. So these cancel each other out. I'm left with this, h plus h squared over h. I'm going to factor out an h. I'm going to cancel those h's so that I don't have the denominator problem. And I'm left with the limit of 1 plus h as h goes to 0. And when this goes to 0, we have a value of 1. And so that becomes our slope. So we have a slope of 1, which, and if you can see the grid here, if I go up 1 over 1 and grab that point, then I can draw that line. So there's my tangent line. Notice one of the points isn't on the curve. One of the points is, because a tangent line only touches the curve in one point. Okay, so we know the slope is 1. I'm not asking you to write the equation of the line, I don't believe, so, um, so you don't have to in that case. So just to kind of summarize what we talked about today, we talked about secant lines that touches a function at two points, and that's algebra. That's what we did in algebra. Tangent lines are touches, touches the function at one point, and that, that enables or that requires us to take the limit of the slope. Um, and so the average rate is your algebra slope. That's your secant line. And the instantaneous rate is taking the limit of that slope because instantaneous implies one point in time. So instantaneous implies one point. So that is taking the limit of the slope. That's the limit method we just learned. So at this point, you should be able to start day one of your homework. Um, and, uh, and if you're going to try the proficiency quiz, wait until the, the next day uh, when we finish up the section.